Well, if I looked all over the world, and there's every type of girl, but your empty eyes seem to pass me by, leave me dancing with myself. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, deep from the bowels of our underground lair, the subject of 25 of 30 of President Biden's recent <laughs> presidential uh, executive orders, but still speaking truth to power. <laughs> Good evening. Thanks for the great introduction there, Jay. I yes, appreciate it. You're welcome. You didn't even say my name. I mean, you, you, didn't I? No, it's like it's Andrew like, Richter. It's Jason like introducing Bradley. Johnny Carson without without saying anything. Really? Is that, is that what it's like? Well, I mean. <laughs> I like to think of it that, as that, okay? So, um, yeah. what was the song again? I had it on the, t- on, the, on, the, on the tip of my... Uh, it was totally on the tip of my tongue. Was it? Yeah. Is it Springsteen? No. Yeah, it's Springsteen. That's no. Those things. Yeah, You're say- thinking of Dancing in the Dark. Yeah, that's what you said. That's not what I said. Yeah, it was too. It was not what I said. It was too. It was not. Rewind the damn tape. I heard... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you whining it or you slurping it? <laughs> it was Dancing in the Dark, Bruce Springsteen. No, that's Fishing in the Dark by Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. No, th- that was <laughs> not. Well, I got the dark part right. No, that's the part you didn't get right. <laughs> what did it say? You said Dancing in the Dark. No, and I'll be dancing with myself. Not dark. Oh, I know that song. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I can damn see you've it. got the feel of it. That's oh, that's half the battle, dude. This is you get the Star song Search in your head. City. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't have you yet, but come back to it. All right, I'm gonna think about it. That's good. You think about it. You have. Oh, I do yeah. have some things, Jay. Yes. Uh I hate, you know what, i tell you what, there's nothing worse than beating a dead horse or beating a, you know, I mean, there just isn't anything worse than that. But this, I think I would rather beat a dead horse than go through some of the stuff we've had to go through in the last couple of weeks here. Or the last year. I mean, <laughs> I think just generally Beating speaking, a dead horse actually I mean, sounds pleasant. It's always a sunny day in my world. Yes. You know, at least till like 7.30 in the morning. Then things can get a little dicey. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> This vaccine rollout, and I know I've brought this up a few times, and I, I shouldn't laugh about it because it's it's serious business. Right. And what the hell is going on in the state of Minnesota? I'll tell you what. I'd be surprised if Tim Wolves ever goes to anything public again. Yeah, and that was kind of where the song was coming from, but uh, we'll, okay, but, we'll but, get to that. I, I'm going to get to the... So uh, that's the tie-in. Okay. <laughs> I want to get back to this yes. vaccine rollout because, again, like I said, I shouldn't laugh about this. But as you know, Jay, and I've said this before on the pro, and I don't have up to date to date info as of light right this minute, but I know that as of a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to say this that way, the average age of somebody who passed away from coronavirus. It was 81 years old here in Minnesota. Wow. I don't know what it is nationwide. I'm sure it's close to that. But this vaccine rollout. Yes. If 81, I just want to I just want to ask this question. If 81 is the average age, why is it that we are vaccinating everybody except people who are that age? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, just stop and think for a minute. Um, I understand doing the, the, the health care workers and all that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They got to take care of those people. They also could spread it to those people. You, you know, and right. you don't want that. And I, I totally get that. Not just because my wife's a nurse, but I, I totally understand uh, why we should do that. What I don't get is how most of the vaccines, I mean, look, look at it this way. Oh, I can't find the damn link. <laughs> Hold on. Give me. T- I know this is boring radio, but no. it's all right. Fun. Doesn't matter. We need the information. Doesn't matter. That's I, right. I kind of remember it off the top of my head. Yes. The um, 
I remember this. Only 28% of the doses yes. have been administered to somebody. This is as of two days ago because supposedly they somehow can't get any in. You know how it takes 10 days for the vaccine to go from Minneapolis to Grand Marais? Yes. Okay, same thing here with the data. The data has... For some reason, the New York Times can get it, Mm -hmm. but the Minnesota Department of Health can't. Okay, that's what we have. Again, you can thank that department. You can thank the people running the department. You can thank the person who appointed those people. Okay? Yeah. So, um, the point being that there are something like, I believe it's 13% of Minnesota's population is over 65. It's something like 700,000 out of 5.5 million, or 650,000. It's somewhere in that neighborhood. The percentage of people like over 80 has to be like 3-4%. It can't be much more than that. How in the world do we not have them done by now? I mean, stop and think. The vaccine was dropped off in the state December 11th. We are recording this January 28th. Yes. And there are people 90 years old that have not gotten their first shots yet. I mean, I'm sorry, but am I wrong to say that any deaths by somebody that age from now on are on the hands of this governor? Well, I mean, it, he didn't take responsibility for he putting hasn't sick taken people res- into the nursing homes he, before. He hasn't taken responsibility for anything, right? So, I mean, what, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm just uh, fit to be tied about it. Yeah. And you look at a state like Florida, where uh, they're operating this twenty four seven. Something like. And I, again, I don't want to quote this directly because I, I couldn't find it. I saw it on tweeting, and I, I couldn't re-find it. But they had compared the ages in Minnesota and Florida. And I know there's more seniors in Florida, okay? I know that. Yeah. But they're, they're getting it at a rapid pace. Florida's doing a really good job of getting I mean, the Yeah, it's like 2 million out. doses they've already put out. We've put out like... <laughs> Two hundred thousand. I heard I mean, they're giving it to alligators in the I, in the Everglades if because they're over sixty five. Yes. Yeah, probably. You know. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's been it's just a cluster blank. And if you go to the New York Times, for some reason they have information up to date today, but the Minnesota Department of Health doesn't. Doesn't Minnesota still ranks forty first? In getting vaccines, despite they're right. ramping up, they're ramping on up. They're just they're, they've been talking about it for weeks. How they're, oh, how yeah. they're Malcolm X. They're and still they're, ramping. They're st- I think we said they were ramping. They're still a neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're driving a stick shift. I don't know. What you got to pop the clutch, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it amazes me how you know states that are way bigger and way smaller are way past. Uh, Minnesota, West Virginia has 81% of their doses are in people's shoulders. 81%. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, uh, New Mexico, 71%. Yeah. North Dakota, 76%. Uh, now, you might say, well, that's a smaller state. Maybe that's, I don't think that's easier because it's less no. dense. Yeah. Um, yeah you got to really. You know, work to get it out into the rural areas. I think so. Uh, North Carolina, 61%. Florida, 64%. Two million they've already done. Yeah. Um, even New York, 58%. Wow. In New York, I mean, Cuomo, he couldn't, can't put his pants on one leg at a time. How in the world? You know, <laughs> Texas, 63%. 2.2 million. Uh, look at states uh, maybe similar to size in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky, a little smaller, 59%. Um, Washington, a little bit bigger, 57%. Um, and we're stuck 41st in the nation in, in uh, only 5.6% of the population has gotten a shot. Compare that to, say, Alaska, 11.7 there are already on that train. So, I mean, once again, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know, even Vermont, Vermont, Bernie Sanders' estate is more efficient than we are. Well, I mean, I know that doesn't say much, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's just... 
I mean, they you know, people got a right to be, you know, fit to be tied a little bit. And I it should be. They, they had this lottery. They had this, and you know what? It's funny watching Walls go to Brooklyn Center today and get uh, harassed by a bunch of people. Um, if you can't find friends in Brooklyn Center, well, you're doing something wrong. Here's the other thing too. Yeah. They asked. Him, I mean, if you're if you're a Democrat and you can't find them, yeah, he, yeah. The, the people there asked better questions than our media. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then yeah. Walls uh, opens up these vaccine places to educators and child care providers. Okay. I mean, really? So, so we're going to give we're going to give a 30 year old teacher yeah. who hasn't been in the classroom in almost a year a vaccine before you give an 80 year old who could you know they catch anything they could die. Well, I, you know what. Is on. I mean, you look at Zeke Emanuel, and you know how there's there's a useful age, right? And once you get beyond a certain age, you have to start ramping down the amount of medical care that they are able to receive because they're less useful human beings in the eyes of these people. Uh, that is why it is. We should hope that they never get universal health care passed during the next four years because it's going to take a toll on our elderly. We've seen what this does during COVID and it's not going to get better when we have to manage care and insurance companies are looking at whether they are going to pay for certain things or not. And, you know, cause everything's going to be more expensive. Yeah. Well, you know, I got, I got, you know, when it comes to health care, I wish I had an easy answer to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I keep waffling on what I think would work the best. And, you know, quite frankly, I think what would work the best for health care, okay, and the only way you're ever going to lower costs, yeah. because, look, something has to be done. Health care is the number one cause of bankruptcies in this country. Okay. Yeah. And something has to be done about it. And I think the big thing it has to be done is it needs to be divorced from your job. I think that's the biggest problem because yeah. when you're not paying the bill, okay, I mean, just yeah. think about if your car insurance was provided third party as a benefit. Yeah. But just, I mean, humor me. Okay. Think any kind of insurance. You name the insurance. Homeowners insurance mm -hmm. was provided for you because know, you notice that doesn't go up ten percent every year. Okay, no. but think if it was provided as a benefit to a job, you weren't paying for it. You weren't paying the whole bill for it. Third party was blah blah blah. I mean, there'd be no mechanism in there to control the cost because I'm not choosing my own insurance. I'm getting whatever is provided for me. Yeah. See, so somehow it's got to be out of the hands of your employer. Somehow it has to be in mm -hmm. the marketplace where I, as an individual, can make that decision and not go, okay, well, here, I'm at a job. I'm taking what I'm given. Right. Because that's the same as having the government provide it, Jay. You're just taking yeah. what you're given. Absolutely. Oh, but I've got all these plans. No. You no, you got one company that gives you two or three. Yeah. You know, it's like investing. Do, it's, it's do like, you want the You the want vanilla stuff? here? Or do you want, I mean, that's all it, it is. Yeah, you you want the good stuff and pay half your check for it, or you want the worst stuff and pay a quarter of your check for it. Yeah, That's and then it. pay when you when you actually use yeah. it. Yeah, and not and, and not have copays anymore. You have deductibles. And was, so instead of paying ten bucks every time you go, you have to pay a hundred percent up to two thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. I mean, but the point being that that it's not in the marketplace. Anybody who says it's in the marketplace is lying. It isn't. Right. It is It is employer choosing something. And then they, you know, it's not like I go to my employer and they give me five different health insurance companies. No, we signed a contract with somebody. But that's the problem because there's, again, that healthcare company mm -hmm. is getting that business no matter what. Well, uh, how can they even argue that it is... Uh marketplace because there are only certain states where you can buy certain companies insurance and there's Minnesota you can't 
You can yeah. only buy nonprofit. That's why all yeah. we have are health partners, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Right. I know I'm missing one or two. And there's some small ones, Medica, that, uh, UCare. Um, there's a yeah. there's a few other ones that are I can't think of. Uh, preferred one that might be one. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's the you law can't. that. So not only can you not choose it, your employer can't choose it either. No. That's like saying, okay, you can buy Geico, but you can't buy Progressive. <laughs> or whatever. I mean, pick your right. insurance. I mean, it's like, well, you know. So, I mean, there's, there's, why can't a for profit company, you can buy stock in them on the New York Stock Exchange, right. but I can't use their insurance. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, I, 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 I just, you know, like I sit here and I, 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 look, I don't want anybody to go broke because they can't afford something. You know, right. I, I'm going to, I'm going to be very blunt with you. I've been sick a few times in my life. And you know what my first thought was? Hmm. What's this going to cost me? It's not, am I going to live or die? It's not, am I, you know, what do you have to do to get rid of this hemorrhoid? Yeah. It isn't anything like that. It's, it's what's, what in the end of the day am I going to have to pay? Well. And I get it. Nothing's free and nothing should be free. Right. But because somebody's paying the bill, but ultimately the, the, the Insurance can't go. Health insurance can't go on the way it's going on. If you want to address cost, you have to get it out of a third party person paying it, or else you're never. There's no one. And if the government provides, it's even worse because government can't control the cost of anything. You got that right. Oh, all right. The song is still in my head. Can you say it one more time? Yeah, I can. I can do that. Dancing <laughs> in the dark, no, right? No. You're stuck on this dark thing, and I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, I had moved on. Was it Dance the Night Away? No, isn't it? uh, Now now you got that song in my head. Yeah, that's that's Van Halen, right? Oh, yeah, you're Dance the Night Away. I was thinking of... That's uh, Van Halen. I was thinking... (laughs) What's that other song? Feel like dancing... Dancing, dancing that away. Who's it? Leo Sayer? Is that no, it? that's oh. uh, that's uh, Blondie. No, that's not oh, Blondie. I don't know that's... That is. <laughs> I know I'm going to kick myself at the end of this. Yeah. It sounds like it's on like an 80s soundtrack. Um, well, if I looked all over the world and there's every type of girl, but your empty eyes seem to pass me by, leave me dancing with myself. I, I don't know it, and I can totally, I totally know the song. You probably do. Well, who is it? Billy Idol. Oh, I, I think I said that a little no, earlier. You did not say I that. I think I said so. You might have said Billy Ocean. Oh, he's good. No. <laughs> he's he's one of my favorites. Uh, I, 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 Caribbean I, Queen was really good, but Get Out of My Dreams and Get Into My Car was terrible. Are you kidding me? That's Unlicensed to Drive, one of the greatest 80s movies of all time. Yeah, it's a good movie. Ugh. I'll give you that. I'll tell you what. You know Caribbean what? Queen was a much better song. Uh, it's good, but I... It, uh, yeah. I you're telling me... I, I don't know if I can go with you on that one. I really don't, because Licensed to Drive is one of my favorite movies of my youth. Yeah. And I got stuck on that... Uh, get into my car or whatever song and I every time that comes on it, it just takes me back to 1988 watching Corey and Corey yes. on, on uh, and I, that's a great song I don't, I don't know that you can make that claim maybe it's not terrible but you said it was terrible you can't take it back ah <sighs> It's not as good as Caribbean Queen. I'm trying to remember what his other songs were, but oh well. That's uh, I'll have to maybe pick some for the for for those of you maybe this is your first time joining us. Uh, is this name really Billy Ocean? I don't know. Uh, you know because we see the numbers growing all the time here. Uh, what we do is at the beginning of the show, I pick some lyrics. It has to do have something to do with the podcast and he's got to guess the song and sometimes he gets it right and more often he doesn't but that's okay i throw the songs up on a spotify playlist uh community solutions music from the podcast and uh y'all can enjoy these fabulous songs that i pick every week so uh that's the story behind that and why dancing with myself because tim walls is probably feeling pretty alone he should be i'll tell you what if walls isn't an alcoholic he looks like he should be (laughs) 
Looks like a guy with like a stash at his desk of, of <laughs> you know, of little pints or something, or he's got some well. Jägermeister in his freezer. And I'll tell you what, Jay, here's a sad, sad fact, because uh, the walls that stole Christmas yes. um, unveiled. With with bated breath, I you know you gotta love the media how they're they're trying to help him. I mean, they're trying so hard to help him. Monday he announced his sweeping education. Yeah. And that's how it was. It's funny how why does the media just all describe it the same sweeping education reform? And if you because if, they'd if, like to sweep it into a dustpan and yeah. toss it out. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> they could put it down their throats for all I care. If you if you looked at CBS, if you looked at Channel Five, Channel Eleven, they all described it. NPR, how's it possible that they all use the same ad? All these different mm-hmm. who are supposedly competing with each other, right? They, yet they uh, all say the same thing because they get the same press releases from the same head of the same party, or they go to the same happy hour. I don't know what it is, but they all. The same, and, and you actually, and we'll get into it in a second. Mm-hmm. When you actually read it, okay, there's the only thing sweeping in it is how nauseated you'll be after you're done reading it. <laughs> okay, and let me let me let me see something else. Yes, and I I, I rewatched something. I, I think I mentioned this on the show a few months ago. I rewatched gubernatorial debates in yes. Minnesota from 1998 and from 2010. Okay, hear me out. 1998, the first gubernatorial race I ever voted in, mm-hmm. was Humphrey, uh, uh, Jesse, and um, Norm. Yes. Okay. They were arguing. Okay, first off, let me back up a second. Walls' budget proposal is for $52.4 billion. Okay. Norm, Humphrey, and Ventura were arguing in 1998... Mm-hmm. About a $23 billion budget. Wow. So in 23 years, we've gone from a $23 billion budget to a $52.4 billion budget. So it's more than doubled. Uh, just in the time I've been, less than the time, a little bit more than the time I've been an adult. Yeah. Actually, I was an adult in 95. So in less time than that, <laughs> Since the first time I voted in a gubernatorial election, the budget's gone up like 125%. Okay? <laughs> I rewatched yes. one from 2010. I was involved in that. I worked for Tom Emmer. And it was him and Horner yes. and Dayton. They were arguing about a $34 billion budget. That was in 2010. So from 2010 <laughs> to 2020, 11 years. Yes. Okay. It's gone from 34 to 52. Well, so I mean, you want to see, and remember, this is your state, okay? Forget your property taxes, gas taxes, sales taxes, uh, income taxes, federal taxes. Forget all of that for us. A watershed, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever else you can think of. I mean, I know I'm missing like a five thousand of them. Yeah. Okay, but whatever. That is how much our state government has increased <laughs> since 1998, and you still hear this is going to be cut. This was cut. We can't. Bump. Uh, I'm just going. You know, here's my question: Why is it that nobody, nobody on either side? can articulate what I just articulated. Now, did you know any of that, by the way? No. No. So why is it that when I when I get on Twittering or Facebook or go to one of these reps' websites or listen to their speeches, what I just took five minutes to lay out is never said once. You got YouTube, don't you, yeah. legislature? You can watch. I mean, even <laughs> Skip Humphrey sound half not half baked in that debate. I wouldn't vote for him, but he sounded semi reasonable. Yeah. He wasn't proposing, you know, what Walls is proposing now. Yeah, you know, I mean. So, I, but, but I mean, the, the levels of spending are just, you know, and and a hundred and twenty five percent more money. And what have we gotten for it? Nothing. I mean, what tangibly? Can anyone show me that government has done, accomplished, uh, you know, 
I mean, you you just sit and go. I mean, are we, when you and I are retiring, Jay, mm-hmm. are they going to be talking about a, a hundred billion dollar budget? Oh. I mean, at the trajectory they're going, if this doubles again in twenty three years. Right. You know, well, you and I are in our rocking chairs. Okay. I mean, you're looking at... Speak for yourself. I'm going out at 120 on a mountaintop like Moses. So, uh, then there's I days no, I don't I even want to get no, out of my chair. But I got no comment on how long you're going to live. Yeah. Okay. But if you know, probably I might make it till next week at this rate. I'll bet I, I'll bet I die yes. first. Okay. But here's the thing. When I listen to Walls talk... It sounds very similar. I mean, he's proposing yet another tax hike. Of course, only gazillionaires are going to pay it. Yeah. But we all know gazillionaires know how to get around taxes, and they right. don't make their money. You know, here's another thing I want to ask. Do people in government not understand how people receive their own pay? Yeah, they absolutely do. They don't care about getting more taxes from the rich. They care about people thinking they're getting more taxes from the rich. I mean, because in this deal here, I mean, he's talking about adding another tier to the state income tax. And I don't know if that's something we're getting to later, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, matter because all of those people already, they pay capital gains taxes. They don't pay income taxes. They're not making a salary of $5 million. No. You know, and and also the, they've got stuff in other states. They've yeah. they got their foundations they give money to yeah. and write it off. I mean, the idea if they, that if they're smart, they're incorporating their business in South Dakota or of Nevada course they or, are. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the idea that that you're going to go get get those evil people that that are screwing you. Somebody's always screwing you. You know, it's not your fault that you lay around on the couch with the sofa with a spring sticking out of it and watch Hulu all night. You, somebody should be just paying you anyway. Yep. You know, and that's the attitude of so many people. And I mean, I always say this go talk to successful people, find out how they got there. That's the formula. Yeah. Don't listen to the government. Don't listen to some, you know, some bureaucrat. Don't listen to some moron on TV. Don't listen to you and me. Go talk to somebody who's successful. Yeah. Find out how they got there. I guarantee you they didn't get there by bowling every Wednesday night. No. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, let's, let's, I mean, again, it's, I am a believer yes. that most roadblocks are self put up. Yes. People just aren't willing to, you know, you listen, listen to, listen to Michael Jordan talk. Mm-hmm. You think that guy took a day off? No. I mean, the guy was competitive golfing. He was competitive. He just had it, whatever he it was. was. He, he was shooting at least 1,000 baskets a day. Uh, he shot he shoot 2,000 the next day. I mean, yeah. it, 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 on a Tuesday night in New Jersey, they were playing their butts off. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bulls were. You know, to they, they didn't take a game off. There was no... But, you know, like they said, not every player has his ability or his drive yeah. or his single-minded focus. And it's the same thing out in the real world. There are people who balance their work and family, and they're happy doing that. There are, you know, I mean... And that's okay. If there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also... a self put up Barry you've made mm-hmm. the decision that you know you're not going to get a second job or you're not going to travel for a living or you're not you know people make those decisions every day and they have every right to do so and really at the end of the day what's important is that people are happy and that they know you know what it is that makes them happy and they're able to achieve that but being happy i believe is never achieved by being lazy you know, and, and government wants to make you think that you will be successful if they give you free access to, to mass transit, if they help you get a job, if they are giving you an education, if they are giving you this, if they giving are giving you, you that. Giving you an education. You, you don't have to earn it. Right. <laughs> you just be given. Right. You know, uh, get you your diploma. Get you into college get your loans paid off so that you don't have to pay your loans yeah you instead know? of fixing why college is going up right all the th- right and and so this is how government proposes to make you successful if you talk to somebody that is successful they're going to tell you i woke up early i worked hard all day you know i i spent time with my family if they had one uh, i went to bed and i got a 
You know, I got. Yeah, they didn't there wait. Are nights I didn't sleep a lot, but there are a lot of nights where I did get good sleep. They, they didn't and, wait know. for government to knock on their no, front door. They had goals. They had larger goals. They had smaller goals, and they would set time. Uh, you know, uh, I want this done by Wednesday. I want this done by January. I want this done, you know, by the year 2023. And they work toward those things systematically. And that is why, because they don't give up, that they are successful. A goal without a plan is a wish. Yes. Period. You know, I'm, I'm marked by something Dr. Phil once said. Oh, boy. The next, I won't do a Phil impersonation. That's okay, you can if you want. I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm even tired of listening to me do it. Um, the next year is going to go by. 2021 is going to go by, whether you do anything with your life or not. Mm-hmm. So you might as well do something with your life, right? You know, the time will, you know, Monday will come, whether you, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> did anything productive or not. So you might as well do something productive. Right. So it's just kind of, you know, I, I it sounds so simple. But, you know, then that's one thing I think that is going down and down in this country. It, it, it's not just the self-reliance. But the whole, I don't want to call it entrepreneurial spirit because I think that's still there. I think it is too. And that's why people still immigrate to this country. They immigrate here. Uh, from wherever they come from because they want a chance to build something. They want to be free to build something. But I think it's, I think it's, there, there's so many roadblocks some that are in people. I mean, I mean, what you have to, like I've said that before on the show, what you have to do to start a business, you know, it, it, would, it would shock you. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you can get a hundred grand in loans to go to a college, you could get it if you wanted it, mm-hmm. but you won't get $10,000 to start your own business. Yeah. And it was just kind of, what? You know, it, it's, I mean, it, it's our, I don't understand why we're so backwards um, in that thinking. And speaking of backwards in thinking, oh, by the way, before we get to the education stuff, I know we're skipping around here, but I, you got to love the Republican responses. This is why your party, Jay, okay, your party. Really? Yes, yeah, your party. It's not mine. I don't think so. Oh no, it's yours. I mean, you you had a, you had a Republican T-shirt on. I saw. I vote. I, I am a Republican it, apologist. It's um, right on there when you walked in. My T-shirt is black. If yeah, anything, but you had a, you, but you had a different of, one on. You had a different uh, one on when you came really? in. Really? Is that so? Um, <laughs> you gotta love uh, doubt and Gazelka's responses because one thing you won't get from those two is a new idea. I mean, between the two of them, they couldn't come up with a new idea if they got ran over. And they basically gave, and this is what I hate, and this is why I'm so glad I don't have to deal with these people, apologize for these people, because I felt that there was a time I had to. Okay, I used to be an officer in the party. I felt there was a time I couldn't say what I'm about to say. But you didn't present. First off... Why aren't Republicans in the legislature leading on these issues? Right. Why are we waiting for the... That's a great question. But I mean, like, like, I mean, I have a theory that goes beyond this of like why they don't bring Jan Malcolm and, and the, the disease lady or whatever in front of... I can't think of her name. <laughs> the, the town leper? Or whatever. Or what? <laughs> the the, the epi, epi, Whatever you call them. Yeah, I can't think yeah. of her name. Doesn't matter. The one who's always talking with Malcolm X. Doesn't bring Steve Grove. Why they don't haul them in front of the Senate, put them under oath, and can them. Mm-hmm. And I think the theory that I have is they don't want any responsibility. They don't want any ownership. They're happy to sit back, and talk on Twitter, and, and pass things that they know will fail. And they're happy doing that, but they don't want any ownership. Because if I were the Senate Majority Leader, none of those people would be there. I would have gone, I would have taken the House over, mm-hmm. and I'd, oust, I'd start impeachment proceedings. I would oust everybody. By now, they'd all be gone. But again, I think they don't want ownership. And when I look at the budget, and it was the same thing under Dayton, they didn't want ownership of it. No new taxes. That's not 
just repeating that over and over. How about you introduce your own tax bracket plan? Yeah. Let's argue about let's argue about their plan, not the yeah. governor's. Instead of how about instead of us like continuing to go backward, let's take some steps forward. Stop signing these stupid pledges and start, you know, because you miss the broader picture. Yeah. The broader picture in Minnesota is we're taxed in a lot of different places. And yes, I know the tax rates are important, but to just stand there and say no new taxes, that's not a negotiation play. <laughs> <laughs> Propose your own budget. Yeah. Aren't Republicans in the majority in the Senate? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to start it in the House, but propose your own. Mm hmm. What are you waiting around for the governor for? You know the forecast. Yeah. It was, we've known it since November. But, I mean, this is true with anything, whether it is a budget or whether it is taking power away from the Met Council or whether it education, is... Education, which we're just about to get into, whether it's, uh, you know, you name Where's the, the plan? issue. Well, it's, it's react to the DFL. Yes. The DFL proposed... Look, opposing them is not hard. What's hard is at least... At least they have a starting point. At least they have what you do At least is they believe in something. Yeah, what you do is okay, if they want fifty two billion, you propose forty. Yeah. Then we'll start the negotiating. I'd like to see but them in, propose zero. Well, right. I mean I'd like zero based budgeting too, but let's just pretend we're not gonna get that in the short run. Right. Um Okay, now we start the negotiating. If you go from forty to forty two, you get something for it. Yeah. But I know what's going to happen. And I don't care what Doubt and Gazelka say. I don't care what they tweet. I don't care what they say at a Tea Party meeting. This is what's going to happen. At the end of the day, they're going to give Walls 95% of what he wants. Absolutely. They've already done that. They'll call it a victory somehow. And <laughs> Republicans will talk themselves into believing that. Mm -hmm. And they'll all walk away happy that our budget's up 124% since 98, not 125. It could be worse if we didn't have the Senate. It would be worse. So we stopped it from being worser. Yes. And they will count, count that as a victory. You trust me. This Minnesota Republican Party will count. If, 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 there was, if, if, if we went from half a million people on welfare to 600,000 people on welfare, and the Republicans cut it to 599,000, they'd take credit for it. <laughs> okay, so just stick with me on that. The responses were as predictable, boring, uh, nothing I haven't heard for the last 15 years, and it explains a lot of why they're where they're at. But, yeah, I mean, at least the Democrats, as bad as they are, uh, they and their activists, the, 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 the people who are passionate, yeah. have something that they're passionate. They have a reason to get out and vote. They have a reason to fundraise. They have a reason to run for office. And yeah. they always can paint Republicans as, well, you just don't want to negotiate. You just sit there and say no. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they, 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 I, I've spent 15 years but watching this. is what this. happens with establishment. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have, I mean, if you look at how this has gone on a federal level, you have the same thing where you have a Republican Party that doesn't do anything. They yeah, can't I'm still waiting agree. for my repeal and replace of Obamacare. Where did that go? I agree on anything. But you've had individuals in the past. You know, Ron Paul was one that would come up with legislation like audit the Fed that was revolutionary he would submit it and then it wouldn't go anywhere but at least he was trying to change the culture and submitting ideas which is more than 99 percent of the establishment ever does uh, you know it's just i you know i don't i i don't regret anybody i voted for 100 percent here i don't you know i don't i don't even regret but I think back of all the work that I did for the Republican Party, and I step back and I go, what? Why did I spend all that time? Well, it gave us a good grounding for what we do now. It does, but... I'm super thankful for it because I understand so much more. I met so many great people. I mean, I think that yeah. that's... Um, Absolutely. That's the one thing that, that I... It's that and the and the work we do mm -hmm. that I that I wouldn't be doing if I didn't. So ultimately, yeah. that's good. But I'll tell you what, I think about next year. I don't even. I, don't, I think about getting that ballot. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, you know. I mean, in 2026, my name will be on it. But I, 
next year, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I mean, I, I just, I don't. And yeah. I had an all-time record of write-ins last year. You know, <laughs> some of them pretty inappropriate. I, I still want to, I still wish I could see who read <laughs> my write-in ballots and how many how many votes Seymour Butts actually got. I would really like to find that out. So, you know... <laughs> So that would be, you know, that'd be great to do. But, you know, I'll tell you, um, I want to get to this education stuff, Jay. Yeah. Because this is so depressing. I mean, this is so typical. And, um, well, before we move on, I mean, yeah. with this whole budget, I mean, he's saying that this requires quick action. Yeah, that's another thing, too, I, that they we he, always have to move so yeah. fast. You know, well, slow down, this, read the bill. This is the post-COVID stuff, right, you know, so right. it's got to move quickly so nobody knows what's in it. Well, there's a whole bunch of money that uh, they're saying is going to go towards Minneapolis and rebuilding Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the number here, but it was over 100 150 million. 150 million, I want to say. Yeah, that was it, which is crazy. Um yeah, and he wants two point seven million now for the state patrol's planned response to keep protests from devolving into riots. Well, what's that going to do? The, where was this? <laughs> yeah, well, what did that do? That's just going to sit. In, you know what it's going to do? It's going to sit in some fund, and in the future, it'll get moved to something else. When we don't need it, when we didn't need it, yeah, it'll get moved to K twelve or something like that. Um, he's also saying that another 1.5 million would offset the cost of having 125 Department of Natural Resource officers assigned to security details during the Chauvin trial. Uh, really? It, so for that trial, it's going to cost 1.5 million for 100 DNR officers. I mean, what? what uh, the Department the, of Natural Resources. Hey, no poaching. The Falcons. <laughs> they, they, you leave them alone up there. Uh, I don't want to see anybody biting the hat uh, heads off of doves. Yeah, make, I don't want to make sure no wolves uh, are being hunted around the around the. Um, well, I, I, yeah, here's another I, one. Yes, twenty five million dollars to provide one time payments to more than thirty two fa- thousand families in the state's welfare program. Okay, they're already getting welfare. Right. I mean, they're already getting assistance. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're going to... And I always love this, one-time payment. Okay, uh-huh. Jay, I want to explain to the people what a one-time payment means. That means the baseline of the budget mm-hmm. has moved $25 million, yes. which means come the next biennium, two years from now, we should explain, the budget works on a two-year basis in Minnesota. Starting, More or less. Starting on July. Yeah. Well, you can amend it. Right. And starting on July. What they're arguing about is the budget that starts July 1st, 2021, mm-hmm. ends June 30th, 2023. Keep in mind, what was it? Oh, about 12 minutes ago, they passed a... Um a uh, bonding oh, uh, the, bill. Yeah. <laughs> that was could get things figured out then. So that, that was when uh, uh, Walls wanted a two billion. Yeah, the Republicans wanted one point three, so they settled on one point nine five. Yeah, that one. But but again, I mean, once again, you had Republicans get bought off. I mean, you had um, you know Republicans to, to get their vote. Got some crap in their area. Yeah, you know, and that's. That's unfortunately, it's why it's one of the reasons we don't need two houses. We don't need conference committees because that's mm-hmm. where people get bought off. And there's one reason why bonding bills, you know, don't have any, um, you know, limits to them. I mean, there should be a limit on the money. There should be a limit on, on what it can be spent for. Yeah. It should have a statewide purpose. You know, not somebody's amenity in a city. That's not where that money is supposed to be going. Actually, it's deficit spending, and we have a constitution that says we can't do that. Right. But we do it anyway. So, I mean, you know, there's there's that. (laughs) And we've used bonding to balance the budget before. So, I guess we don't really take it all that seriously. Uh, Uh, So, but, but yeah, the Do North Education Plan, Jay. Yeah, which is is funny. I mean, because in this... 
in this bill or in the uh, budget, he's looking to spend seven hundred forty-five million on K through twelve education, which would enact a wide range of programs. More, and, yeah, more aimed to help plug learning leaks. Whatever that is, it sounds painful. Well, that's when from that, that's when an a, entire year of virtual that's when a, learning. That's when a parent teaches a kid something. Yeah, that's contrary to their school. They want it to leak right out of their ears. <laughs> that's what they want it to do. <laughs> Um, yeah, he wants a 1% increase in funding this year, which would be for the next school year. Yeah. And then a 2.5% increase the year after. That's on the per student formula, which equates to a whole lot of money because of how that formula is, is divvied out. Yeah. So it's, it's once again, I mean, he's back to, it's like the vaccine. He's rewarding the people who supported him. And that's really what he's, he's up to doing. But this, this, I'll tell you what. You gotta love the, the the little group he put together to come oh, up with this because I do not I'll tell love you what group yes I'll tell you what they had to have some some language police they had to have some <laughs> some good uh, uh, you know good stuff to come up with all this uh, this is not good stuff no it's not no but but you know one thing I just want to point out one thing that uh, you're not going to hear about. Uh, learning. <laughs> well, let me put it at the top here. It says Governor Tim Walz yes. oh, I'm sorry. and Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. You know, I might rethink. Every time I hear I, I want to introduce articles of impeachment against Walls, then I listen to Peggy Flanagan talk. And I kind of go, you know, it's like, do I want to get rid of Clinton to get to Gore? You know, I kind of like, I listen yeah. to her talk and I go... Because I always think it can't get worse. Right. Do you know what? It, it can. usually does. <laughs> it can it get usually worse. does. I mean, uh, I lived know, in the fifth where we had Keith Ellison and then we got Omar. It can get worse. It can get worse. I, I would say going from Biden to Harris would be worse. Yes. I, it, yes. I think President Harris is doing fine now, but that's Joe guy's got to go. Um, I, I think going from Bush to Cheney probably would have been worse. Probably. I had no doubt about yeah. it. So, I mean, you know. Be careful what you wish for, I guess. Yeah. But they're due north. Due north. D U E. Yes. North. Education plan serves as a guide toward a future where every child receives a high quality education, no matter the race or zip code. Well, well they already failed. Um, if you want to do that, yes. Okay. Um, there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's. Not how we're doing it. We've no. been throwing money at education since the 60s, and it's done no good. Uh, the way to do that is to put the choice that they can go to any school, whether it's in their zip code or not. That's step one. Step two is having a totally different alternative to traditional school and uh you know what we've talked about yeah, this in a prior I mean, I know. episode but yes we the, must reiterate jay because we are community solutions yes we're not people that just sit here and bloviate okay no. we have ideas and we do articulate them <clears throat> and um this on the other hand <laughs> this is bloviating i can't even describe it i mean priorities jay these are the big time priorities meet the needs of students during and after the covid19 pandemic which if we follow the science they'd all be in school right now so yes. there wouldn't be any need to do that continue to support schools as they navigate the pandemic while prioritizing in-person learning for as many students as possible. Well, we could have done that months ago. Yeah. Doesn't sound like it might be as many students as safely possible because it sounds like exactly zero high school students might end up back in schools this year. Can you imagine that? Missing your senior year oh. and part of your junior year? I would, All the be, things you I missed, would be so upset. Football games, prom, yep. uh, uh, you know, um, having my lunch money stolen, yeah. all of it. Hanging, yes. hanging uh, <laughs> some nerd by their suspenders <laughs> in, the, in the bath. I didn't do that, by the way, Cooper95. I don't know who did that. Um, everybody peeing in the toilet and stuffing the water boys face. no i don't know i don't know anything about that uh i just you know i just i just somebody else some terrorist did that um 
But I mean, what's happened here, what we've done to our kids, I'm sorry, is downright criminal. Yeah. We've stolen that from them. Expand academic opportunity and mental health services to every student in the summer of 2021. So we've kept kids out of school for 10 months. Now we're worried about their mental health. Yeah. Yeah, in the summer when they want to when they want to be out of school. What does that mean? They're gonna have to go to school in the mental health classes in the summer. <laughs> uh, and mental health, I mean, it's, just it's, a, it's no another, joke. I mean, these students are there's so many of them that are are struggling, you know, emotionally that uh, have attempted suicide or been successful. Haven't seen their friends. Have, yeah. you know, I mean, and we've normalized that. We've normalized this idea that if you get together with your friends at 16 years old, you, it's it's a super spreader. It's a super yeah. spreader event. <laughs> I mean, that's what we, you got to play basketball with a mask on. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've normalized. Look, these these kids are not their fault. They don't know any different. They're not like you and I, who've had years and years to look. I mean, they're 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 not in charge of anything, and yep. we've we've. Just screwed up their lives. It's just now. Here's something that it really ticks me off. This really pisses me off. Yeah. Because we all know with government, there's no such thing as a one-time investment. Okay. Because again, this moves the baseline spending. Mm-hmm. This isn't provided. Next time they'll call it a cut. Right. Provide a one-time investment to ensure pandemic enrollment loss does not nev- negatively impact students. Let me translate that. Make up money Mm -hmm. that districts aren't getting because families have chosen to go elsewhere because their freaking schools aren't open. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> we all know the state is is yeah. is largely due in enrollment. They're funding. So if people said, okay, you're not going to open, I'm going to take little Johnny to their charter school that's wide open. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take him to their Catholic school that's open. Because mm-hmm. it's it, my child's not learning. I got to work. Yeah. You know? And so that's what they're doing. That's what they're. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about, about... This is a sop to Education Minnesota because they know... Less money means less jobs, mm-hmm. less teacher raises, blah, blah, blah. Less dues lining their pockets. Less, yeah, less voters. Buying their Lexuses. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's yeah. garbage. It's it's so unfair to the you chose to close the schools, you chose to not reopen them, and now you're expecting us to pay. We're not providing anything. Right. That student's gone. Why should we pay for that student when they ain't there? Precisely. Jay, yes. He used to be a teacher. Every student receives a world class. You know, when I see world, yeah, I immediately don't want to read the next line. <clears throat> yeah, a world class education. How about we start with a competent class education? How about we start with that a student can graduate high school and explain to me how a loan works? That would be I guarantee you they'll take no, out a loan. They yeah. might not come into contact with a, you know, with a transvestite or whatever else they learn about in school. <laughs> but they're going to take out a loan. <laughs> not gonna, they might not come across. They might have to take out a loan. They might one. not come across a man transitioning into a woman. I, who's, I, I could suggest a bank in the Twin Cities yeah. where they could go take out a loan for one. So. <laughs> I bet you could. Bet you're in line at that bank. No. no. <laughs> but I mean, world class. I mean, yes. world class education. No, not United States. No, not 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 world class. Yes. Ensure academic standards across the mo- address the modern needs of the workforce and are inclusive of ethnic studies and reflective of students of color and indigenous students. Hmm. Uh, we used to call that Indian. I guess we call that indigenous now. Or Native American after that. And then, yeah. But I mean, so we're going to meet the needs of the workforce by studying um Making sure that the studies are of certain races and ethnic groups. Is that what the workforce is looking for? Um, yeah, no. That's really not. Uh, it sounds like, to, like from this, they really want to prepare 
ethnic students and indigenous students to enter the workforce. Oh, okay. so you know, but but isn't the way to do that to teach the math and English yeah. and science? You would think so. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you talk about needs of the workforce. That's not what. That's not what. That's not what K through twelve does. No. Look at the jobs out there and tell me we're preparing kids for them. No, we aren't. Getting them ready for college. But look where the job shortages are. College ready. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Career path. <laughs> All right. I got your fans, soccer moms. Hold on. <laughs> Open a window. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, but I mean, that's. They're doing the opposite of that. Yes. They're taking a 1950s model. Okay. And they're not. It's, it's college readiness. <laughs> Oh, baby, college readiness, career path. You know, Jay, you ought to go yeah. on. You ought, you ought to go on like eHarmony and put just what? by your name, put career path and college readiness. <laughs> <laughs> See how many hits you get. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Uh, that would be worth creating a fake profile to do that and just see what happens. That would be all right. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so let's see how oh, that's got. Um, extend early learning opportunities to ensure the social and emotional and academic needs of every learner are met. So we're going to be everybody's doctor now. Yes. You know, um, if you have any emotional needs, okay, we are going to deal with that now in early, early learning. So three, four, five-year-olds, we're going to deal with their emotional problems. I'd rather they didn't. You steal somebody's truck or something, you're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to put you on some Zoloft or we're going to have to, you know, because you have emotional, you got PTSD yeah. from, from having, you know, your lunch money, you, you it fell out of your pocket on the way to school and, and you've got a, I mean, a social and emotional need. What, what, where do you come up with this stuff? You are there for one purpose, to get the tools to be a success in life. Yes. You're not there to be everybody's psychologist. Oh, honey. Let's lay, in fact, in fact, let's not learn anything today. Let's lay the kids on couches and let's talk to them about, yeah. about their, what happened during their child. Well, you can't, you can't do that because they're... <laughs> oh, oh, honey, your dad supports Trump. Let's have a talk. I know you must be hurting. You'd love to have an exorcism yes. or something like that if that happens. <laughs> okay. Expand access to out-of-school opportunities. So it's the school's job to expand access to out-of-school opportunities. So what does that mean exactly? Is I, that... I guess it doesn't mean charter schools. So it sure doesn't. <laughs> Don't mean That's church. The kind, the Don't mean church. Out of school opportunities, I'd like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with faith. No, can't have that. That must be. No. I mean, what is that? Getting get a job? What, what, what is access to out of school opportunities? Who doesn't have access? Yeah. Access to what? Yeah, it doesn't say after school, so I'm assuming that's not like sports and knowledge after school club activities. And, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what were you on the the uh, choir and the? Uh, I was uh, in band and pep band and jazz band, and I played basketball. You played basketball. And baseball. You played basketball. I did. You have that Bradley hook, or what did you have in basketball? Yeah. What did you play in I basketball? I would palm that thing. And yeah. Just... <laughs> I bet you did. Take off from the free throw line. Yeah. And make yeah. it a foot and a half. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was... So you took off from the three-point line and made it halfway to the free throw line. I was very good at boxing out other people. I, I made I defense my specialty because I was not a very good shot. I was okay at defense. I just stuck my ass out. I was okay at defense. Yeah, that's, I was all, a, that's all boxing. I was a good is. shooter, but I couldn't get open. I, I couldn't get away from anybody. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't elbow somebody in the forehead, I couldn't get away from them. All right, here's yeah. the next. Here's the next thing, Jay. Oh, look at the look at the line and look at the end of this one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Hold on. I want you soccer moms or security 
lady moms, we're ah. calling you now. I want you to open a window, okay? Because you might get a little heated up here. When we need you to sit down for a moment. Unbutton that that three dollar blouse you've got on, and and you're going to listen to this. Reimagine the high school experience to increase career and college readiness. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> reimagine high school. You know, I thought high school would be like say by the bell. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna reimagine that. I'd like to forget about a lot of high school. I wouldn't mind having Mr. Belding as the uh, principal though. I mean I wouldn't mind that, but <clears throat> reimagine. I wanna um I, I want to just back up a second here, okay. Jay, because one thing you're going to find missing, and I don't know if we necessarily need to go through this one by one, but um the priorities here, um, one of the priorities, and I'm reading AmericanExperiment.org here, which kind of does a nice summary. Um, I can't read the person who wrote it. Walls Do North Education Plan Lacks Outcomes is the title. Yes. Um, I'll show you a few more uh, priority priorities here without reading all this nonsense. They do have a link to what, you and I are reading, Jay, uh, under New Education Plan. You can just click on that and read what we're reading. But let me let me add a few other things that they're putting on that are highlights. Establish an equity, diversity, and inclusion center at the Minnesota Department of Edu- Education to address systemic racism. Hmm. So we're going to have a an, our own wing at MDE to address systemic racism. So what's that going to be? I mean, that's going to be where we all sit around and and what? Trash white people in history, trash the Constitution, um, talk about how bad of a country America is. I mean, what else do you do in something like that? Well, I'm sure they could come up with some ideas for uh, discipline or the lack thereof that, uh, you know, too many people are getting suspended. The Human Rights Commission, that's what came up with that. I mean, that's another one of these think tanks that they went around in districts and said, you're suspending too many black kids. Stop it. Okay. (laughs) So how do we discipline that? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's because I know Robbinsdale District was on some naughty list uh, for doing that. But, I mean, what is systemically racist about our K-12 through education? See, that's where I don't get any, I don't get an answer to. And to me, this is, this is... This is where we get under the banner of activism now. It's going to be teach kids to be activists. Teach them to be angry, to be mad, to think that the world's about to screw them. Um, And then they're going to take that with them as adults. So, I mean, but I mean, what is an example of systemic? I like to call it systematic because I hate the word systemic. (laughs) It's okay. Um, Yeah. What is an example of that in K through 12? I mean, forget the discipline for a minute. Yeah. Explain to me what is racist about your, your neighborhood elementary school. Yeah, probably nothing. Well, I mean, I, but, but what are they there to address then? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it they, sounds like just a catchy thing to get act like you're, they're well, doing something, or and, and that could very well be it. Uh, I mean, who knows though? I mean, they may use this as a way to get critical theory into the. Uh, into the schools, especially into the lower grades. Uh, they may use it as an opportunity to come up with programs and curriculum. And it, it might not even be like year long. You know, well, like we, what was it two weeks ago with the social studies curriculum yeah. changing? Uh, th- that was all about critical theory. And, and so a, a department like this could uh, push that even further. Yeah, they could push it to ridiculous extremes. You know, math is racist. Uh, then, you know, at where, English where language that? Seattle, is racist, racist. Right? Seattle was the one uh, well, uh, school district that was saying math was racist. There was a there was a school district years ago that that I can't remember where. I just remember the story because Sean Hannity had some reported on it that they had a program called Almost Math, where you were close enough to the answer. <laughs> you know, 
two plus two, plus two is five. Hey, eh, close enough. Yeah, you know, you know, ten minus four is eight. Eh, you're getting there. <laughs> Almost math. That's no joke. That's what they, that, that's what was. I don't know if it was proposed or what, but you know, California is where they came up with social promotion. Mm-hmm. You fail everything, but we promote promote you to the next grade, so you don't lose any friends. <laughs> Who cares if you learn something? That doesn't matter. Right. What matters is that you're with the in crowd. Okay. And, and I, I could see something like that, too, where we, we again, lower the standards so more make... Th- I think one of the things they're aiming is the state test to dumb them down. Yes. So that more minority... I mean, I'm not saying minorities are dumb. They're not. But they score lower on these things for whatever reason. <clears throat> and... The state's made no progress on it. I mean, none. Mm-hmm. They talk about it, but they make no progress on it. And dumbing down standards is one of the ways that this has been combated. It has been. Yes. Whether it's college admissions or whatever, uh, dumbing down standards has gone on for a long time. And I think the, one of the things the Minnesota standardized test they're going to aim for is to lower the standards. Well, there's been talk about that for a long time. Yeah, but I mean, but but I mean. It'll be done in the name of fairness, in the name right. of, you know, uh, it'll be worded in a way to make it sound like that's not happening. Right. We'll hire some think tank or focus group to figure out what words people, we'll hire Frank Luntz or somebody to figure out what words people, people respond to. There's one other part here. Develop and provide, oh, two others, ensure Every student receives an accurate history of Minnesota's indigenous people. And by accurate, they mean totally inaccurate and false. Well, by accurate, they mean... Making the white man look terrible. Right, and the Indians look like... I mean, yeah. they were victims sometimes. But, Absolutely. But, but, there were terrible tragedies yes. that happened. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a terrible chapter. But there, It's a terrible there chapter were, in our history, yeah. period, no matter who is at fault. It just is. Yeah, it yeah. is. But it's not going to be told objectively. It's going to be told subjectively that the white man is a problem. The white man is the cause of all the problems. I got a better idea. Yeah. Do anybody? Does anybody who graduates from high school know the governing structure of... Uh, tribal lands I'm sure and don't. how they differ from state government and what's a lot. I mean, that would be, I, I don't even know at all. And right? I mean, how about that? That would that be a first? great thing to learn. I think it would be a great thing to learn. We have a lot of them in Minnesota. Absolutely. Up we do. to Red Lake and, and yep. uh, Fond du Lac and Mille Lacs yeah. and, and over in Hinkley. And I mean, there's there's a lot of different tribes. And and I mean, it would be interesting to, a class on that would be very educational, I think. Yes. But I'm guessing this is all about putting something into their heads and getting them to think a certain way. That's really mm-hmm. the goal here. Yeah, they're, they're trying to bring the indigenous people into the critical theory. They have been... They have been put down by the man for so long that they need to rise up and join the fight to do something. There's just simply certain groups that are going to be forever victims. You know, even no matter what they accomplish. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got... Uh, indigenous people, Mexican people, black people who've accomplished great things. Mm-hmm. And yet, you wouldn't know it by, right. li- by listening to, to, to what you hear. Uh, develop and provide training for all school staff on anti-bias practices. Now, that is the biggest joke that I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Anti-bias tactics? Practices, I mean? Which really is, again, anti-white. <laughs> you know, I, I think that the, the thing that, that uh, again, I, I don't want to go through it one by one anymore, but the thing that, that strikes me when you read all of this is it's all a bunch of feel-good statements, mm-hmm. but there is nothing in there about goals... No. Or, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to look at things that are missing, yeah. okay, benchmarks, standards, goals, and I'll tell you what's really dangerous, local control. Uh-huh. There's nothing that, that you're not going to be able to escape this 
no matter where you go, unless you're able to go to a charter school or homeschool, yep. this is going to be forced. This is going to be top down, forced everywhere. That is the biggest worry that I have is that. Um, nobody's going to have, we already have so little control with Common Core and all that over our curriculum, and it's yeah. getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, according to the American uh, Experiment.org, 65% of Minnesota's black students aren't proficient in reading, 72% aren't in math, yet there is nothing in here about reading and math no. to get them where they need to be to be successes. Nope. It is all about any reading. It seems to be around indigenous people. Well, and, and it's... <laughs> but I mean, yeah. this article points out that Mississippi, which spends thousands of dollars less per student, yet black and Hispanic students outperform Minnesota students on standardized tests. Mm. You know, so it's not a matter of spending money. No, it's not. So, you know, again, I mean, yeah, additional state money. There's there's six hundred and forty nine million dollars in extra federal money coming in. Also, yes. I mean, that probably will go up. I'm guessing that would go up. You know, I'm guessing this year it's going to be more. Probably, <laughs> don't you think? You know, so I mean. Uh, Jay, again and again, we are community solutions, Jay. So let's let's pontificate for a minute. What we would do? Uh, what would our do north plan look like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, think. I mean, first of all, we're smart. We'd we'd go south instead of north. <laughs> but so I like my lakes and trees. Well, in the and summer, stuff it's like fine. That. In the yeah. su this time of year. That's I don't mind it. I don't mind the winter. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm so Minnesotan. It's just, yeah. it's I'm half sick. Kentuckian, so that's pro that's my problem. You aren't I half guess. Kentuckian. How am I not? Because you've been here your whole life, so therefore yeah, there ain't no Kentuckian my, my in My DNA you. is half Kentuckian. For all I know, I'm related to Abraham Lincoln. I could or be. Jefferson Davis. Uh, no. <laughs> well... I, I guess that or maybe Henry Clay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got any Lincolns or Clays in your family tree? Not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so what? Um, so, what would we do? How would we change this, Jay? Yeah. To actually get outcomes that actually would do something productive. Oh boy. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, what I mean? other than college readiness, <laughs> <laughs> don't say career path, or I can't handle it. Oh, funny. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny. Um, we talk about more money coming in here. Uh, I just took a quick look, and teachers in Minnesota make like around fifty six thousand seven hundred on the average, and it looks like in Mississippi, uh, it's around forty four thousand six fifty. So I think we know where some of that money goes. <laughs> well, I do know the South. A uh, little lower cost of living. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah. Well, and of course, I'm sure Mississippi has lower taxes than, but I'm sure they do. I'm that's sure they guaranteed. do. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do the math. So. Starting with school referendums. Uh, anyways, yes. I. Well, obviously, I mean, we need to bolster our reading and our science and our math. Um, you know, I, I, they need better civics education. Uh, they need better economics education. You know, it, you know, re balancing a checkbook maybe is is an old skill, but you still need to be able to look at your your online banking statement and but, figure out. But Jay, this where is what I, this is what I don't get. K through twelve, thirteen uh -huh. years. How in thirteen years can't that get accomplished? Mm -hmm. See, that's where you lose me. Is how is it possible that a standardized math test, which is not calculus, right. it's not trigonometry, nope. okay? How is it that so many after thirteen years in the public schools can't 
efficiently, whatever the standards are, whatever the grade levels are, they've been dumbed down too. Oh, yes. I mean, how is it that, that can't be accomplished? I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I, I, we but, look but here's, at... Here, let, let me tell you what's frustrating about that. You don't know, and nobody can answer that question mm-hmm. that's there either. Right. They can't tell you either. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, how long have we been sounding the alarm? Oh, we're our education system is falling behind Japan. It's falling behind places in uh, Europe. Uh, but yet, we're not doing anything to put those things in place which would make us competitive with those countries. Instead, we're putting in critical theory and critical theory and critical theory. And, and that is supposed to fix the deficit in our education. Go back to when Bill Bennett was President Reagan's Secretary of Education. He yeah. wrote, he wrote a great book. I can't think of the title of it. Um, and then he wrote a sequel later, yeah. all about that very subject. And that I means talking in, in the eighties, right? So I think it was a nation at risk. It was called. I mean, and then I think his second book was called A Nation Still at Risk. And if you want to read a great assessment of how backward and behind we are, that is a great from this former Secretary of Education. Yeah. Tell you something else. Another thing. How about we? Make adjustments. This is, again, why I I think private schools and things have to be part of the equation. You have to teach to the jobs that are out there. Mm -hmm. How do you expect a kid to ever become an engineer or, or, I'm not an engineer, but I mean like a, like a, a, a carpenter or a mechanic, if they never come across this stuff yeah. when they are in school? Look at the jobs in need. Look at the jobs that don't require you to spend 100 grand on a college degree. But there's some sort of relationship between high schools and colleges. There's some sort of buddy buddy thing that they all promote going to get a four year degree in African American studies and going out and becoming a waiter. I mean there just there is there is something fundamentally wrong about that. Yeah. You know, and like you said, I mean basic basic I mean I know plenty of adults who can't do this too. But a supp- ask a kid who's 18 to explain a supply and demand curve to. Him. <laughs> right. I mean, ask a kid who's 18 to, you know, um, name the seven continents. I mean, you will get blank mm-hmm. looks. Okay, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could still do it. I probably could. I used to be able to name all 50 states and their capitals. I, yeah, I think know. I could. I might miss a couple capitals. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, people don't know this. I always forgot yeah. if it was at Birmingham or Montgomery. You know? Montgomery, Alabama. yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Birmingham's the largest city. Yes, you know Montgomery's yeah. the okay. capital. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's there's so many practical things that just. How do you get a high school diploma and not know? Yeah, you know, and it's just I. I don't know if it's if it's. Um, you know, if, if these things, you know, look, I, I don't know what it is. I really don't. But I know that we can do better and we have to do better. Mm-hmm. And we have to demand better. It's not enough just to hope that these that this happens more. And I'll tell you what, parents have a job to do also. Yes, they do. Learning has to be reinforced at home. It's not the school's job to teach your kid about about. Gays and lesbians, it's not their job to teach... The birds and the bees. Yeah, I mean, there are certain things that... that How to be a good person. Right. I yeah. mean, your your morals and your faith. I mean, those things, if they're not reinforced at home, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the destruction of the nuclear family, I think it's the biggest problem in the black community. Yes. I mean, you know, whatever you want to say, all things being e- e- equal, I think that's the biggest concern i have is is the the single family homes and the not that a single parent can't be great because they sure as hell can be Mm -hmm. but you know i i just it's it's something that has to change and when you listen to leaders in that community when you listen to to politicians they have no answers as to how to do that they don't have any clue it's because we can't judge anybody now right so they have no clue as to how to stop that yeah, I mean the answer is you know not. I mean they, the answer is you can't talk about. It. Right, I've been called racist for bringing it up. It's like, wouldn't you think that a good family structure around a minority kid would be a great thing? Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. So, it's like, do you think I want them to fail and go into the system and, you know, end no, up? But that's what they want. Of they course. they want more people in the system because then government is fulfilling their self appointed role as Messiah to be able to be the savior of everybody to meet their needs and for them to be able to just. You know, and we, we wonder why things don't succeed. Yeah. We really wonder. Well, well, I don't wonder, but they wonder why. Wow. We just weren't spending enough money. We need more money. It's it's like the lockdowns. If if yeah. people are still getting sick, we, we didn't lock down hard enough. Yeah. But that's the answer. We just didn't spend enough. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't have enough resources for this kid or that kid. Yeah, it's not our fault that that something happened that was wrong. It's that you know, taxpayers just didn't pay enough. Somebody rejected a referendum. Yeah, and that's why. And that's just what you're going to get every single time. Jay, it's that time again. Oof. Goes it by is, fast. It is time. Time for the master of disaster, the king of sting, the pomp of circumstance. Wow. The suffering of succotash, the roddy of piper. Be there, be square, or be flare. <laughs> Styling and profiling, jet flying, limousine riding, wheeling and dealing, son of a gun. Once again, the Vikings are the pregame preach, but it don't work for them. <laughs> so we got something better. I hope so. Jason Bradley with our sign-off sermon. S-O-S. Thank you, Andrew. I made sure to say your name this time since you said I didn't introduce you at the beginning. Well, I you know, my fame is unbecoming of me, so I need <laughs> to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't get enough rewards in, in, in high school and elementary school, apparently. No, all I know, all I know is this. I always fly first class, Jay. You know why? Why? Because I'm a big star. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I get crammed in coach. Ah, it's all right. That's where all the fun is anyways. All the screaming babies, all the... Yeah, but the free alcohol is somewhere else. <laughs> you can keep it. All right. Well, things ain't none too good, and they sure ain't getting better. We got two years, at least, to try and figure out how to save the Republic. I mean, really. We got, we got to keep this thing afloat for the next two years, and then hope that we get enough people in there that are going to take back some of the power. Not for themselves, but to release it to the people. You see, we shouldn't ever be looking at, at gaining power for ourselves. People who do that need to be gone out of government. But it should be about releasing power to the people. And that is the key. That, that's, I think, some of the most difficult. Because these people go to St. Paul, they go to Washington, they have power thrown in front of their face. Oh, you could chair this committee. You could have some money for your re-election campaign. All you got to do is uh, co-author this bill with me or be a supporter on this bill. You know, you'll have everything you need to get your re-election. Now, granted, that happens in Washington a lot more than it does in St. Paul, but it does happen. You know, uh, we need to eliminate that anywhere we find it. When we have people that won't stand up and won't propose new ideas and just, like Andrew says, they're busy on social media complaining about what the Democrats are doing, but they're not doing it, they need a primary opponent. They need to be challenged. They need to know that they can't just sit on the laurels and expect to be elected every, you know, two to four years. Every six years if you're a U.S. Senator. No, they need to be kept honest. And the only way to keep them honest is to have people come and challenge them. So, uh, how do we do that? We build something from the ground up. City councils, school boards, 
county boards. We have to put together a farm team that is going to train people how to govern early so that those who can and who do a good job and keep the will of the people are able to go on and do so much more. Because let me tell you, we've taken so many steps backwards. We have not been true to the Constitution. We have not followed the, the I would say, mission statement of the United States of America. We have not protected freedom for everybody, no. In fact, we have figured out a way to use tyranny through oligarchs. <laughs> People who are a group of people who gather power unto themselves. To take money, to take freedom from those who are just normal, everyday working people. And to somehow build an empire on their backs. And that's no good. We can't, we can't have that. There's nothing fair about that. That's what critical theory does. It takes those who feel like they're being oppressed and they find somebody that they can call an oppressor and they go after that oppressor and they build a kingdom on top of their hard work, on top of their honesty, on top of their go, go get emness. <laughs> it's not a word, but I think I just coined that. Their persistence might be a better way to say that. You see, and it doesn't matter. I mean, wh whether we're passing these $52 billion budgets or whether we're trying to set up social programs in our schools, we really are being separated from what it means to be an American. You see, we hold these truths to be self-evident. We are endowed with certain rights from our creator among those are the right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and those cannot be taken away no they cannot those live on in our hearts and we live or we die as free men the second we choose to give that away we become slaves so it is up to us to be resolute in our hearts that we will never give that up. So what do we do? We don't go to meetings and sit around and talk about stuff and not do anything. We don't complain or, or you know, give thumbs up or whatever on social media. We don't sit around and watch the news on TV. And, and, and well, No. That is called being a taker. You need to be a giver. A giver is someone who sacrifices comfort for the sake of their fellow Americans and even more for their children and their children's children and their children's children's children. All for the sake of keeping America free. Because your children are going to ask you someday, what did you do? I don't understand why we have to live under this tyranny I don't want I want to be free we had freedom why isn't America free what did you do to stand up for it grandma grandpa and uh, what are you going to tell them because they are looking to us and whether we're in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, if you're still drawing breath, you still have work to do. It is only when they decide to have that special service for you or they put you in the ground and celebrate your life where your job here is done. You've lived a long time. You've got something to add. You've got wisdom. You've got knowledge. You've got things that you remember how things used to be when things were more free. Do not retreat back into your homes and just sit there and, and worry about the way the world is getting. It is time to put on our helmets and our breastplates and our, our shield and, and, and pick up our sword. And I mean these figuratively, but I mean them that, that 
We've got to wear a helmet of salvation that, that protects our minds, a, a breastplate of righteousness that protects our heart, a belt of truth that we will always be able to stand in a place of truth, the shoes of peace that wherever we go, we will act in peace toward others, but a shield of faith to, to put out all of the fiery arrows, arrows of the enemy. A sword of the spirit where we will take and we will cut every lie. We will cut through every deception. We will cut through all of the fraud. We will cut through all of the things that are hidden in smoke-filled rooms. And we're going to expose it to the light. And we're going to disinfect our political system. And we can only do that if we take steps forward and we make sure that we do not retreat. The moment that we retreat, it's all over. When we give the ground, when we act like the Republicans in St. Paul and Washington, and we just, you know, oh no, we're not going to stand for that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to vote for that. And then in the end, they end up caving to most of it anyways, because they didn't have another plan. They didn't come out with a good idea. They didn't lead. They just tried to defend. You have to come out of where you're at with a good idea, with a purpose, with a reason to fight, a reason to live. And that can only be done if you make that decision to sacrifice comfort on behalf of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. So there's many ways for us to do that and get involved. And, and I know it's hard. You know, you've got all these people in these left-leaning groups that get all this money from, from George Soros and all these other people that uh, David Brock, all these billionaires that came together and, and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And all this money is, has flowed into these left-leaning causes. They're not hiring people that are as smart as we are, as talented as we are, that want it as bad as we want it. So why don't we prove them wrong? Let's stand up and let's decide, okay, this is my Super Bowl. I'm not letting this go any further, and I'm going to win. We are going to win. But first, you gotta you got to help people understand the problem. One way you can do that is by letting people know about this podcast. Every week we come on and we tell you what's happening in this state and what's affecting the local level right where you live because that is where the rubber meets the road. So whether, whether you're liking it and sharing it, you're subscribing and ringing the bell, uh, you're copying and pasting the URLs into an email and sending it out to everybody you know. It, it, it has to be done. We have to get the word out. And this, this isn't about us. I mean, we, we do this podcast every week because we don't, we don't know how to sit down. We don't know how to be quiet. We don't know how to stop. This podcast, you know, we're not... We're not walking out of here lining our pockets. But we're sounding an alarm. We're sounding a clarion call because we need patriots to stand up and do something. People who have a moral compass. People who want to do the right thing. Not we, If you want power, we don't want anything to do with you. We want people that want liberty. We want people that want to set things straight, that want to right the ship. And if that's you, Get a hold of us. C O M M Solutions, M N at gmail.com. That is C O M M Solutions, M N at gmail.com. We need forward thinkers. We need people that will propose things to cut the budget, to reduce spending, to get rid of onerous regulations. To cut the powers of the Met Council. Not people who want to go to get along. But people who will stand there and say, not on my watch. Here's where I'm standing. I will not be moved. If we have enough of those, we get to save the Republic. Is that you? 
I hope so. Get a hold of us. Get a hold of us. And let's talk. You know, I'm really thankful for each and every one of you that listen to this show every week. You know, I see the numbers growing and it is encouraging to me. It is encouraging to know that there is a growing group of us out there who are not going to allow the United States of America to slip into darkness. Thank you for being our allies. Thank you for working with us. Thank you to those of you that have trusted us to help you run races, to give you strategy, to work with you in figuring out how to get you on a city council, a county board, a school board. All you who aren't on anything yet, I encourage you to go down to your, your county, your city, your, your school board and try to get on an advisory commission and advise those bodies. That's entry-level governing. Anyone can do that. You don't even have to do an election. You just have to go down and fill out an application and possibly do an interview. That's, that's where it starts. If you do that, let us know. Email us. Again, commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. We will build a movement that will change this state and state by state eventually change the nation. It's going to happen. So again, thank you. Until next week, we love you, Minnesota. And now it's your turn to get to work. Get to come.